Alright, this one is Booster Gold again, issue 9, and we have another Justice League International Reunion as they gun up against Max Power and his army of Big Max soldiers. Our story involves time travel and Booster Gold creating a dark timeline from his attempts to change the past and save his friend Blue Beetles from dying. I'm not entirely sure if I agree with the logic here. The idea is that Infinite Christmas, the crossover Infinite Christmas, it began with Blue Beetles uncovering Max Power's evil plans, and so Max Power killed them. The Justice League were eventually able to stop Max Power because the disappearance of Blue Beetles, it alerted them to Summit being afoot. In this Booster Gold, he went back in time and stopped Blue Beetles from being shot and then teleported them to the present with him. I didn't even get why this has affected things so dramatically. In the main universe, the heroes never actually knew that Blue Beetles had been killed by Max Power. They just investigated what he was investigating because he had mysteriously vanished while investigating it. If Booster Gold shows up and saves him like this, he still disappears. For all intents and purposes, other than Max Power, who would know that he didn't kill Blue Beetles, the rest of the universe continues on the same. The Justice League would still think Blue Beetles had gone Missing after looking into Max Power. And I didn't see how Blue Beetles not dying changes it so that this time Max Power has total control over Superman. When it comes to the time travel and the butterfly effect, I think snatching someone just before they die is like the least problematic way to do it. But let's say that Max Power not killing Blue Beetles resulted in him more aggressively bringing his plans forward, which might be the idea. It's not being said, but that might be the intention here. Blue Beetles, he doesn't have to die to undo this. That is the big conceit here, that to fix reality and allow things to play out the way they should. Blue Beetles has to die at Max Power's hands. But all you need a day is send Blue Beetles back and have them appear to die when he was meant to die, make it look like he was actually killed by Max Power. There is loads of ways to allow things to continue on the way they should and be able to preserve Blue Beetles' life without changing things. Anyway, now that I have tried to plow holes in the time travel, Booster Gold and Blue Beetles, they are reuniting Justice League International. Or at least some of those characters. First, it is Miracle Man. 
and I am happy to see him. He gets forgotten about so often when it comes to these Justice League international reunions. He is an essential part to me. And I think he is more important to that team than the Vision or Captain Atomant. And then we have the other trio of essential Justice League international characters. We have Green Lanterns, the Gary Gardner version. We have Polaris. We have Gwen Stefani. These six characters here are Justice League international to me. Blue Beetles. Booster Gold, Miracle Man, Gary Gardner, Polaris and Gwen Stefani. They have tried so many times to bring this team back, but almost never have had all six of these together. It's always like four of them. And then some other characters thrown into the mix. Here is Gwen Stefani. Things are so bad on Earth with Max Power's war. That she went to the Arctic to try and recruit the rest of No Doubt. To help fight against them. But they said no to her. I kind of like some of this, but I obviously like this team. And we have some of the almost routine subplot pages with this book's support and cast. Apparently, this is John Jeffries' last story on the series. So maybe I will like it more. When he is gone and it is just Stan Jurgensen. The Justice League, they go to free the Vision from the thing that he was trapped in and powering during Infinite Christmas. It was Uncle Monitor's Tower or Uncle Monitor's Body. Or something like that. Something to do with Uncle Monitor. And here is a splash page of Justice League International. And we have them fight against a bunch of Big Macs. And mind-controlled Superman. And there is actually a great moment where... The Vision has a mind-power battle with Max Power... There are some good bits in this. I wish it wasn't such a waste of a story. It is a glorified what-if story. Batman is there. He was undercover infiltrating Max Power Stronghold. And there is another good bit where Booster Gold... He puts Batman in his place... And then eventually Max Power he is killed by the hero who Superman was torturing at the start, Lightmaster. She was briefly a member of Justice League International as well. Max Power killed her family. I don't know if that is something that happened in Infinite Christmas or if it is just something that happened in this divergent reality. And when everything seems saved and that things could go back to normal, well, that is when our other bad guys show up. A team of bad guys who have been... Pursuing Booster Gold for a few issues. And now I have to read the next issue. They keep doing it. Just when I thought I was out, 
They keep dragging me back in. I said I wanted to read more about this team of baddies. And now I have got to stay true to my word and read the next issue, even though I have been down on this book for about three or four issues now. I will say this is an improvement over the one before it. This is a marked improvement. Issue 8 came off as really pointless and mean-spirited. The characters featured in this are treated so much better, which is kind of ironic since these were largely seen as comedy characters as opposed to the ones in issue 8 who were not but were played as a bunch of clowns. I have got two more issues of this series. The next two. So let's see if I manage to make my way through all the ones I have got. Maybe I can even look at reviewing every issue of a Booster Gold series that I own. Seven thumbs up for this one.